Well, hello again. Um, I am on a 10-day COVID quarantine after exposure to a lab-confirmed case. So um, I'm wearing a mask because I have housemates and I am in my room because I might be contagious. So a little bit different uh, type of video today. I wanted to talk about my dart frogs because this past May one of my Philobate's terriblest dart frogs injured her foot. The injury was impacting digits 4 and 5 on her right pelvic limb. She did not exhibit any other signs of illness. Her gait was unaffected so she could walk normally and uh, she did not show any signs of overt pain and was still eating and moving about freely in the vivarium. The injury may have been trauma and secondary infection or it may have been um, a case of terribilis foot rot, which is a poorly described condition, presumably a form of primary pododermatitis, that has been reported by hobbyists to occur in this species in overly wet conditions. I should note that pododermatitis means inflammation of the skin of the feet, and it is not a discrete disease. Rather, it is a clinical sign that can occur with multiple underlying disease processes. As an infection, it can progress beyond the skin and result in damage to the underlying tissues. How well it can be treated depends on the underlying cause, which is why examination by a veterinarian is so important. This was an unexpected finding since the vivarium that we had going was cycled and no issues had occurred in the previous 18 months that the frogs had been in there. That said, the leaf litter had broken down and was about due to be replaced, so it is possible the substrate was more moist than it is normally. I researched treatment options and one of my roommates reached out to a friend who is a zoo specialist. Ultimately, we decided to add new leaf litter a rock where the frogs can perch if they want to sit on a drier elevated area. And I also applied topical silver sulfdiazine, also known as SSD cream, for 10 days. I observed that my wounded frog was opting to use her dry perch during this recovery period, coming down only to eat. Fast forward seven months, and not only has her injury healed, but the toe has actually regenerated. You can see it is shorter than it should be, so I imagine it's unlikely she will regenerate um, lost bone, but the pad has completely regenerated. I'm very impressed with the healing capacity of these little animals, and I'm happy for an ultimately positive outcome. I should note that this video is more empirical than I usually like to be in presentations, as pododermatitis in Philobates terribilis is a problem that's poorly reported in the veterinary and hobbyist literature. So this is basically a single case report where I tell you what I did and the outcome. We can't really draw concrete conclusions from a single treatment of a single animal, and it's tough to tell if husbandry changes or the SSD were primarily responsible for the recovery, or if she would have recovered on her own without any intervention at all. That said, I believe making this presentation available as a resource to veterinarians and hobbyists who might encounter a similar problem is worthwhile since the clinical outcome was positive. As a basic component of husbandry, provide philobates with a dry rock they can climb up on and consider using lots of leaf litter so the top layer dries out. I cannot say conclusively if moist conditions alone caused this injury, and I actually suspect she injured her foot somehow and it became infected secondary to the injury. That said, once she was injured, she regularly used the dry rocks if she knew she needed a way to keep that foot dry. A rock and extra leaf litter is a can't hurt, might help kind of husbandry change. It costs nothing, and I was fairly annoyed that in all my research prior to designing the vivarium, I had never read anywhere that philobates are known to be susceptible to pododermatitis, or that they could benefit from something as simple as putting a rock into the enclosure. SSD appears to be useful as a treatment once per day. This is documented in the Carpenter's Exotic Animal Formulary, and it was also recommended to me by a zoological medicine resident. Talk to your veterinarian about duration of treatment. I did 10 days and then once or twice afterwards when I took her out to examine her. I wanted to do 14 days like I said because she started out docile but then she became harder to safely handle as time went on and she learned that me coming to the cage didn't always mean food and instead meant that she would get scooped up and manipulated. I thought that it might be doing more harm than good to really try and you know track her down and get her into my little net and take her out and, and apply the SSD. So I did stop at the 10 day point. I do suspect some amphibian patients could require a longer duration of therapy depending on the extent of their injury. I kept my frog in her vivarium during her recovery. This is the treatment choice that I was least confident in, because with non-amphibian animals you would want to remove them into a sterile hospital enclosure. My rationale for not setting up a quarantine enclosure was that my vivarium had been cycled for 18 months, meaning that there was certainly native fungus and bacteria present, 
but the presence of these native microbes could also theoretically prevent overgrowth of a particularly pathogenic species, and my cleanup crew of springtails and isopods would quickly consume any animal waste after the frogs had a bowel movement. Um, since amphibians require moisture, I felt putting her into a quarantine enclosure with damp paper towels could lead to an enclosure dirtier than the actual vivarium. While initially sterile, these paper towels would quickly become colonized by bacteria and potentially fungus due to the moisture, and whenever the frog had a bowel movement, it would not be actively consumed by cleaners and could thus contribute to bacterial buildup. So I elected to treat her while she was in her vivarium, and I was ultimately successful. Uh, that said, I might have elected to use a hospital quarantine enclosure if the injury was worse, but since she did not show systemic signs of illness or even pain, and she was eating and moving about normally with the injury, I decided to leave her in her enclosure. If you and your veterinarian decide to set up a quarantine enclosure, I would recommend changing the substrate at least daily when you apply the SSD, and probably using moist paper towels as that substrate. So overall, what were my findings regarding pododermatitis and Philodates terribilis? Well, I've seen it listed online as a death sentence. It is not. If you catch it early and treat it appropriately. I should say, obviously, this video should not be considered an alternative to veterinary care. A uh, physical exam by your veterinarian will be critical to establish whether this approach is an appropriate treatment option or if your pet will require a different therapy. If you've been enjoying these videos, please go ahead and like the video and consider subscribing. It helps my channel grow and lets me know I should keep devoting time to making these videos. Dart frog pododermatitis is a pretty niche topic. So it might be weird enough to be interesting, or there might be like 14 people on the face of the planet who actually care. So if sort of veterinary videos about exotic species are something that you'd like to see more of, uh, please let me know in the comments. As always, uh, my citations are listed below, and thank you so much. Bye.